Hi everyone, uh, my name is Tim Nash. Uh, I'm here today to give you a quick little rundown on the Harvest Clean Energy ETF. Uh, this is a brand new clean energy ETF. It's the first clean energy ETF in Canadian dollars and it launched today. So this is kind of like a quick review. I don't have all the information, but I'm happy to show you what I've dug up and to give you sort of my first glance at the Harvest Clean Energy ETF. Really excited to dig into this. I've been waiting for a Canadian dollar green energy ETF for a very long time. Uh, I noticed when they filed their prospectus about a month ago and I've been just sort of like waiting and today's the day so uh, let's jump into it so you can see here uh, why invest in this fund the harvest clean energy ETF invests in a portfolio of the 40 largest clean energy issuers selected from the clean energy investable universe so really you know what i want to point out here it's got 40 companies inside and it is the 40 largest companies that they could find and then this term clean energy investable universe does refer to something very specific and i wasn't able to find the definition anywhere here on the website uh, I wasn't able to find it, but I was able to find it. Um, I went through to CDAR, which is a website where they have to file all the different documents. And I was able to dig up their final prospectus. And you can see here that the Clean Energy Investable Universe um, is all issues that meet the following characteristics. Uh, first, it does have to be listed on a recognized stock exchange in one of these countries. So notice that um, it doesn't have any emerging markets. So this is only quote unquote developed countries. Uh, Hong Kong is here, so there could be exposure to China, but it's not going to be companies listed on the Shanghai exchange or the, um, uh, yeah, I think it's Shanghai is the major one. Um, uh, it's going to be companies listed on the Hong Kong exchange that that is allowed, but otherwise no other emerging markets. Uh, from there, these are going to be companies that are categorized as renewable energy or renewable energy generation. Um, or it's categorized in the power generation or electricity and gas marketing and trading categories with greater than 50% revenues derived from renewable energy. Uh, so this is a bit of a sticking point for me and as you're going to see there is going to be some natural gas in here. Uh, companies that get more than half of their revenues from renewable but this isn't what I would call like a fossil fuel free fund that there is still going to be some but it's just companies that are greater than 50% in renewable energy. So that's going to be a really important distinction um, as we look at what's inside. Um, they do have this lovely little PDF here. Uh, I'll open that in a moment before I'll just go through these investment highlights. So passively managed portfolio of 40 equally weighted clean energy companies. So even though, you know, uh, they do have these sort of like managers here. Yeah, you can see they've got these managers. You know, these are really just the managers for harvest overall. Um, what it comes down to is this is going to be quote unquote passive. Uh, meaning that I think they're just going to choose the 40 largest companies that fit that definition. Um, and, and then every six months, they're just going to uh, rebalance it and they're going to do it equally weighted. So, you know, 100% divided by 40 different companies, you're looking at about 2.5% per company. And it's not like the cap weighted ones where the bigger the company, the heavier the weighting. You know, this really is going to be even across the board. Obviously, during the six months, some are going to go above two and a half percent and some are going to go below. But then I think they're just going to rebalance it so that every six months they just the company sort of snap back to two and a half percent each. Uh, we can see here the management fee 0.4 percent per annum. Um, so this is a really good, nice, low management fee. I'm really happy about this. Uh, keep in mind that this isn't the full management expense ratio, that when it comes to calculating that full fee, uh, there might be things like trading fees or something like that as well. We do have to account for HST. So, you know, when I do 0.4% times 1.13, which is that HST because it's listed in Ontario, you know, I think likely investors are going to pay 0.45% is my best guess. It might end up being higher than that. Sometimes it's higher, but then they rebate it. So it's a little bit tricky. Um, but, you know, I would say that expect to pay sort of at least that much. 
Um, from there, you can see, yeah, rebalanced and reconstituted semi-annually, which means that every six months, um, they're just going to go back to that 2.5% for each of the 40 companies. Uh, currency unhedged, meaning that, you know, there's going to be a little bit of currency risk because uh, most of them are outside of Canada. That's fine. Uh, it says here, focused on true clean energy companies, renewable energy producers, and renewable energy related companies. So that is true, but again, there is that 50% threshold. Um, and then companies are diverse with unique opportunities in a global universe. Uh, this one is a truly global fund, which I'll show you when we look at the geographic breakdown. Um, so they do have this great little PDF here. This is probably the most information we're going to get um, that you can see really if we come down here. Uh, they don't give us the list of, of, of all 40. Like if I want the list down here, it's like only the top 10. So you can see, again, most of them are going to be two and a half. You know, these guys might have had a really good day or something where they kind of popped up to go above that. Um, but if we want to see all 40 companies, which we do, then here you get the different uh, logos for the companies. Um, so these are the 40 companies. You can see that most of them are in this sort of renewable power generation. So I would consider these to be renewable energy utilities. Um, and that, you know, some great companies, some of them are pure play uh, renewable, so like Interjects and Borlax, I know are 100% renewable, um, but there are some other companies in here like Transalto Renewables and Northland Power, um, which are not 100% renewable. They are going to have some natural gas in here. Uh, I was looking up Transalta Renewables, so this is like Transalta Renewables here, and when we look at their list of facilities, um, you can see that they do have a fair bit of natural gas. So, um, you know, in terms of megawatts, you can see, you know, these, these are pretty sizable plants in Australia, uh, Sarnia, Ontario, and in Michigan. Um, but, you know, it's going to be less than 50% of their revenues. Most of it is going to come from their hydro projects, um, as well as their, they do have a little battery storage, that's kind of cool, and the wind projects. This is what I really know Transalto Renewable for. Um, and so again, you know, lots and lots and lots of wind projects, but you know, by megawatt, they are gonna be a little bit smaller than the natural gas ones. Um, as well, they do have like the one solar project. So, you know, it's not a huge deal, but it is important to understand that this does have some natural gas in here, that this isn't what I would call sort of like fossil fuel free, but obviously the companies need to have more than half of their revenues. And so it really is gonna be these companies that are very much tilted towards renewable energy, um, which for me is really, really exciting that this is available. Uh, in addition to these renewable energy utilities, you do have uh, solar equipment and services. So, you know, Enphase, they've done really well lately. They do rooftop solar. Uh, First Solar has been around for a long time. You know, these would be sort of the largest solar panel manufacturers. Uh, as well, a little bit of battery and energy storage equipment, which is super cool. Uh, hydrogen and fuel cell equipment. So this is an area that some people are really, really excited about. Um, and wind equipment and services. Uh, Vestas and Siemens Gamma said these are the two largest wind turbine manufacturers in the world. Uh, I want to point out there's no electric cars in here. So no Tesla, no Neo, right? Like they're just, they're not in here. So, you know, if you're looking for exposure to Tesla, you are going to have to get into a different ETF. That said, I'm fine with that. Um, that this is very much focused on clean energy and that really the only link to electric cars would be inside of these battery and energy storage equipment. I'm just not sure these two companies, um, my guess is that these are going to be more grid scale, but it might be fun to like dig into them to see whether they do have any uh, um, clients that are in the automotive sector. But my expectation here is that this is really kind of like large scale renewable energy, overwhelmingly going to be solar and wind, you know, especially based on, on these. And remember that because the equal weighted methodology, basically every single one of these companies is going to be at roughly two and a half percent. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see over time that it will vary sort of every six months, some, you know, there are little fluctuations there, but then after six months, they'll kind of snap back to that two and a half percent weighting. Uh, when we look at the breakdown, again, most of it is renewable power generation, these utilities, and then from there, solar, and then, you know, really just with these guys, interesting, there's a little bit of cash, um, but uh, doesn't, I don't, don't think that's a problem at all, but I would like to see them put that to work. Uh, in terms of the geographic allocation, you can see 27% US. Uh, although this is the highest, you know, it is the biggest country, but um, typically when we look at these funds, uh, it's going to be closer to like 55 or 60% US. So even though it is the biggest country, a 27%, like it's certainly not like 
outrageously weighted. It's I would say this is sort of underweighted to the U.S. Uh, notice Canada in here at 12.4 percent represent those uh, uh, companies, and you know New Zealand actually I would say sort of punches above its weight here at 9.3 percent. Um, so this is I would say a global fund. Um, you know, it is diversified, at least within the green energy sector. It doesn't get into things like energy efficiency or other sort of like clean technologies. I'm not seeing like smart grids or uh, a green construction materials, things like that. Those aren't in here. This is very much like a clean energy ETF. Uh, it is what it is. And that's what you're getting. Um, so really, you know, that's about it. I mean, on the website, a lot of these things they just they don't have very much information like this ETF fact page it's just like kind of useless it's just like not available not available not available and I can't really get too much information you know I certainly won't get ESG scores or anything like that um, even when I look it up on Yahoo you can see here you know it's trading for about 20 bucks a share which is I think where it started although it looks like maybe it you know opened the day at twenty dollars and seven cents that might have been the first uh, 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 purchase notice just NAs across the board and then one thing I did want to point out is you know someone got ripped off today uh, that I can see this that you know at 11 12 a.m. someone paid $21 per share uh, when it's really only worth $20 so this tells me that someone overpaid for this someone probably did like a market order or like put in like a really high limit price. But this is why I, I, I really suggest using limit orders. If you are gonna buy a brand new green ETF, you know, there aren't that many people buying or selling it. So, you know, do a limit order. And again, I look it up, I look at this thing called the ask price, which is the highball. And I usually set my limit price at like two pennies above the ask price. So I would set it right now at like $20.06. Um, you know, obviously when the market's open tomorrow, this is going to fluctuate, but like you really do want to be careful. Like someone bought it for $21 and then like literally the next minute it was, you know, back down to, 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 $2, to $20 and they just lost 5% like that because they overpaid for it. So, you know, that's really, I would say, uh, be careful there. Use limit orders for the time being. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on this. I'm going to see what happens. Uh, I'm excited when I will get more of the ESG data, carbon footprint, stuff like that. We won't get any of that right now. So maybe I'll do a more in-depth review a little bit later. Uh, but for now, just kind of wanted to give you my quick hit, you know, review of this ETF. Uh, I'm really, really happy that it exists. And uh, hopefully this is the first of many. I know that BMO is about to launch a, a green energy ETF, and I'll be really excited to review that as well when it launches. Um, hope you're having a great day. Uh, if you've liked this video, please do me a favor of like the video on YouTube. Uh, give me a comment. Let me know what you think of this ETF. What do you like? What do you don't like? Are you going to buy it right now? Uh, I'd love to know whether this is going to be part of your portfolio or not. And if you want more great content like this, just hit that subscribe button so that you'll get uh, all my information. You'll be doing me a huge help with the YouTube algorithms just by engaging and, and doing those clicks uh, to make sure that lots of people get to see this video. Um, hope you're having a great day and uh, we'll see you again next time.